I'd like to start with a question. Who here has ever thought of building or designing their own dream home? Show of hands. See, look around, everybody. I mean, who has it? Buildings are so incredibly important to us that our desire for them seems natural. Let me pose another question. Can you imagine a world without innovation? A world where we settle on good and don't keep searching for great? Innovation makes the world a better place by solving complex problems. Innovation is the tool of disruption. It changes and shapes our sense of what is possible with ideas that at one point of time might have seemed crazy. I believe that how we design, build, and live needs innovation. I believe that if we begin to transform how we design, build, and live, we can build a better world. Three years ago, I moved across the country to Idaho, and of course, at the time, I didn't think that three years later, I would still be here. But I came with an idea and an opportunity. The idea was to use industrial hemp as a building material. Industrial hemp came to me when I was a senior studying architecture, and I found that when we combine industrial hemp with a mineral-based binder, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and forms a solid, insulating building material. To me, this building material had the potential to inspire a reconsideration of how we build sustainably here in the United States. Now, I know what you might be thinking when I say industrial hemp, and no, I'm not talking about a house made of marijuana. And no, if your hemp house catches on fire, you and your neighbors won't catch a buzz. But in the unfortunate case that your hemp house does catch fire, it's unlikely to burn down because hempcrete is fireproof. It's also resistant to mold, it's highly insulating, and it's entirely natural. Building with hemp is an idea that at one point in time might have seemed crazy. And maybe even to some of you right now, it does seem crazy. But innovation can come in surprising and unsuspecting forms. The opportunity that I had in moving to Idaho three years ago was to be a part of a collaborative design-build project. This collaborative design-build project brought together a group of people who were working to bring to life the first public-use hemp building in the United States. This building project at Idaho Base Camp taught me some valuable lessons. And the first lesson was that when people come together with open minds and embrace new ideas, projects can come to life in forward-thinking ways. The second lesson that I learned was that, at the time, I didn't know enough about design or construction to take that experience at Idaho Base Camp and to apply it elsewhere. I knew that if I was going to be part of a reconsideration of how we build sustainably in the United States, I needed to learn building inside and out. And so for the last three years, building has been my occupation. Bringing innovation into building is what drives me, and it's why I'm here today. So why is it important that we innovate in how we design, build, and live? Well, first, let's consider this. Over the next 20 years, an area equals to 3.5 times the area of the United States built environment will be rebuilt, redesigned, and reshaped globally. If all this new construction is rebuilt and redesigned with traditional inefficient methods, we lose out on an incredible opportunity. We lose out on the opportunity of turning the building sector into a solution instead of a problem. And we can see that buildings are a problem because their impact is quantifiable. Here in the United States, buildings are responsible for nearly half of our energy consumption. That's 47.6%. And that 47.6% directly correlates to buildings being responsible for 44.6% of our domestic carbon footprint. So these two statistics show that the way that we design, build, and live has an impact on two important areas, energy dependence and sustainability. If we want to think about ways that we could take action for energy dependence and sustainability, we need to look at our homes and our habitats and the way that we live before we all go out and we buy Priuses and blame industry for the degradation of our environment. So it's clear that buildings have an impact on our environment, but what about us? I mean, we spend an incredible portion of our lives indoors. 
I don't mean to startle anyone here, but the EPA suggests that the average American spends 93% of their lives inside. Yikes. I hope it's not true. And maybe not all of us spend 93% of our lives indoors, especially in this community. But the point stands. We need the most innovation where we spend the most time. If you were to ask a builder in 1850 what construction would be like 100 years later in 1950, it's difficult to imagine that that person would have predicted the rise of suburbia. They probably wouldn't have predicted the use of widespread production-style construction methods. If you then asked a builder in 1950 what construction would be like today in 2016, it's even harder to imagine that that person would say the way that we design and build would be nearly exactly the same. This is part of the problem. The way that we design and build has not changed enough. The picture on the top is from a housing development in the 1950s. And the picture on the bottom is from a job site that I was working at just a few weeks ago. There's a few differences between the two pictures, and I'll explain. In the picture on the bottom, we have power tools and machinery, which ultimately helps make the construction process more efficient, more productive. In the picture on the top, the workers are mostly using hand tools and human power. I have a lot of sympathy for these guys because I can only imagine how much of a pain in the ass it must be to build a house without power tools. <laughs> but this is about where the differences end. Aside from some advances in tools, some advances in materials, and the digitalization of blueprints, things really haven't changed all that much. We have sent a man to the moon. We have seen Y2K. And we walk around with voice-activated computers in our pockets. How could it be that we're still using many of the same methods that we used over a half century ago to design and build our habitats? Well, I think first it's important to point out that standardization, building codes, and the bottom line keep those established systems as the primary legitimate pathways. But we need to look past that. We need to look towards those ideas that, at one point in time, might have seemed crazy, and use them to forge a better path forwards. Now, I'm not suggesting that everyone here go out and build a hemp building, even though that'd be super, super sweet. I'm not suggesting that everyone go home and unplug their lights and turn off their heat, because we know that we're not going to do that, even though it might have some sort of positive effect. What I'm suggesting is that we need to demand the same innovation that we expect from our iPhones as we do in our buildings. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. These new methods, materials, approaches, and strategies, they're already out there. We just need to start demanding them. If we start demanding more innovation in how we design, build, and live, we can begin to reconcile buildings with our 21st century reality. And this 21st century reality is that buildings have a profound impact. As consumers and members of the built environment, we all have the power to be the change. If we can recognize what we have now, we can understand that more is possible. And when we understand that more is possible, we don't stay settled on good, we keep moving towards great. I think it's possible to imagine a future where our homes, our dream homes, our habitats, the places that we spend most of our time are in balance with the environment. Winston Churchill once said, we shape our buildings, and afterwards, our buildings shape us. The course that we have been on and the impact that our buildings have are shaping us. They're shaping us, they're shaping our environment, and they're shaping our world. It doesn't have to be this way. If we begin to realize these things, we can begin to take the source of a problem and turn it into a tremendous opportunity. Together, we can start shaping how we design, build, and live to build a better world. Thank you.